What's good, y'all? Dougie Simmons here. You see that we're doing another one of these tourney wrap-ups. That means that I went to a tournament. And this past weekend, I took myself up to Macon to see what was up with the Reboot crew and their February monthly. I say the February monthly. Don't, don't get it twisted. This wasn't just another beginning of the ranking season. What was going on was Sir Retro decided that he wanted to have a memorial tournament for one of the recently deceased Reboot members, uh, Reggie Cummings. Reggie was pretty fond of Marvel 3, so they decided to include Marvel 3 along with some of their usual suspect games, Street Fighter 5, Soul Calibur 6, and Tekken 7. Now, they didn't just have a tournament for Reggie. Um, they wanted to help raise some money for his family, so they did some raffles. They sold some shirts and between both of those they were able to raise somewhere on the plus side of three hundred dollars which is pretty cool for them. past that though it was a really really surprising tournament to see out of the reboot crew um they've been trying really hard to revamp themselves to reshape themselves into a more structured and solidified crew and try to have a better tournament experience and i i say that in spite of the fact that most people who go to a reboot tournament say it's one of the best experiences they get in the state but that's not good enough for them so they do a lot to try to improve it and this past week and this past saturday really shows the fruition of their work because, again, like, you're looking at this attendance number, and if you've looked at the past reboot wrap-ups, 49 is already a high number, but 49 is misconstrued. It's It was really, like, 60. I keep saying above 50 just to keep myself on the safe side, but it was pretty deep for four games that usually don't get a lot of people for them. So let's take a walk through these. Um... I guess the first one I'll start off with is actually Marvel itself. Because even though they had a Marvel memorial, I I honestly can't say I know too many of the making people that play Marvel. Um, a lot of them that showed up had to have been or have to be people from the Comics Plus era and before. Ones that don't regularly frequent reboot now. Because these are just a lot of names that I don't know. But even with that, they were still able to get... Uh, they actually had 16 people. One of them didn't show up, as you see, but had 16 people pull up. Now, the result of this doesn't surprise me for what I know. Which is, yeah, believe it or not, Terrence won. Yeah, that Terrence. City Trends Terrence. It doesn't surprise me. Because, one, like I said, I don't really see a lot of them frequent reboot, or I don't hear a lot of them frequent reboot. And one theme that I always, always harp on about is, like, visually seeing people practice, visually seeing people work on their consistency, making progression, making evolution, so on and so forth, being better players, right? And since I don't see them, I can't gauge that. It's not that Marvel hasn't been played at all at Reboot, because Retro was doing a couple of training sessions leading up to it. It's not like Marvel hasn't been played in the state lately. So, if there were a couple of people that I've seen there, they would stand out. Uh, if there's a couple people I would see from Macon specifically. And I say that because the reason why Terrence doesn't surprise me is because in the places that I've been seeing Marvel in the state for like the past few months, Terrence has always been there. And that's something that'll be kind of surprising to some people. Because it's one of those things where if you don't stop and look and see that Terrence is playing Marvel. And is actually grinding it. Then you won't believe it. For everything that you know about him, you won't believe it. Because for everything you know about him, he's the Chun player. Since Grand Blue's out now, he's the Catalina player. He likes Sam's show. He's the Charlotte player. That's the... The, the footsie character, like the the neutral or die kind of person. 
which you can still do in Marvel. It just depends on what your definition of neutral is. Some people have a very narrow definition of neutral. But the point I'm making in all this is that it's no surprise at all that Terrence was able to walk through this entire tournament and not drop a single game. And yeah, I'm pretty sure he didn't drop a single game because the reboot crew was pretty meticulous about making sure they got the scores. I don't have any specific insight I can add to any matches because I I didn't watch Marvel. When we go through the photo album in the background, or a little bit later in the backside of this, that's what I was looking at. When we go through the photo album, you'll kind of understand why I didn't look at Marvel, but I just, I'm the bad guy. I didn't look at Marvel. So, sorry. Sorry. Um, let's do Soul Calibur next. Soul Calibur had some surprises, some really big surprises, actually. Although, the end result is everything I expected. Blackstar decided he wanted to show up. So, sure, you can call this Ojo bias if you want, but uh, I was pretty sure he was going to win. And then, especially seeing how the grand final set panned out <laughs> and learning one... Uh, subtle but very important detail to this matchup it it makes perfect sense I'll get to that in a second because the the highlight of this tournament actually wasn't grand finals it wasn't directly winners finals although you see the end result it was this match right here and winners quarters all right so if you know anything about the reboot crew which you, you have to know about the Reboot crew specifically to get this. You would know that Leon is actually the biggest advocate of Soul Calibur 6, Soul Calibur in general, in this entire state. I put him as a bigger enthusiast over Mikosu, put him as a bigger enthusiast over Ayn, and that's in spite of everything that Ayn does for the game. Like... The thing that really gates Leon is the fact that he's in Macon and it's hard for him to travel. But he is the sole reason that Soul Calibur is still a thing at Reboot. And in fact, he was the one that specifically presented it to his crew, the Reboot crew, and asked them to give him another chance with Soul Calibur this season, even just for this. Because he's been working with some people. He's been working with Laughing Hyena. That's Camden. He's been working with Chambliss. And like those two specifically. Who are. They're known for, for playing Tekken. In fact like. They didn't play any Soul Calibur. Up until like maybe. Three or four months ago. When Leon. I don't want to. I don't want to say harass them. Even jokingly. Because he. He, he did everything that gets talked about in the Georgia community, where he's played Tekken for a while, so he asked them to meet him halfway and play some Soul Calibur. He took them under his wing, uh, brought them up to where they are. I'm trying not to laugh right here. <laughs> but basically, he, he was the, the mentor to the two students, right? And to see this, and I sat and I watched this set, to see this happen, kind of speaks a lot one for the work that Chambliss has been putting into Soul Calibur which is a pretty good bit he's even asked me to come back and play him and I I need to do that I'm lazy y'all know that but it also shows the work of Leon to actually mold somebody from his own crew that can actually stand up to him now I'm not going to go into details because there's a little detail to this that I should add to this but guess what I, I can't find, like, a detail button here, right? So, uh, yeah, he gonna have to hold this. And he was, Leon was kind of distraught about this. Chambliss, though, was, he was really the big talk of all the 3D, or all the 3D games, both the 3D games. Took his win, went over Bates, and then right here, yeah, yeah, that, no, nah. <laughs> no, 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 that wasn't happening. But much to Chambliss's dismay, words are hard, when he gets down here, 
and he goes against Leon in the bracket of alternative success. Leon ain't playing no games no more. He understands he's got to come at him 100%. And Leon gets him 3-1. And it's still pretty good that Chambliss got this one. It's still really, really good for him. I, again, that, that speaks so much. Now this match. And I meant to sit down and record myself going through some thoughts of this. Because, I mean, I watched it live. Uh, Lee Van Dam was gracious enough to record it, and he's already uploaded it to YouTube, and I watched the VOD of it, made some notes of it, just for my own knowledge. Uh, without going into all the girls' details, there's one really... It's, uh, it's hilarious to me. There's no other way to put it. So, Raph got one pretty huge buff in Season 2 that gives him more of an opportunity to have a presence, to have a defense, to take a guess when he's in his preparation stance. De depends on how you want to word it. There's different angles you can look at. But even with that, it uh, prep is still weak to one string, one type of string, rather. And there are a couple characters that have this kind of string, but it didn't cross my mind that not only, uh, that it didn't cross my mind that Taki has it. Stop. All right. And not only does Taki have this string, for the way everything lines up, whenever she checks prep with this string, she gets a lethal hit. It's kind of insane to look at, but that's, that's how that was. So, when you take a real core concept away from a player, a real, like, fundamental base that they have in their game plan, it leaves them on an island. And that's what that 3-0 was about. Alright, so moving on. I guess I have to go to the Georgia Who's Who, which was Street Fighter V. And this tournament, this bracket. Now, if you're from Georgia, I don't even have to say if you're from Georgia. If you are a knowledgeable Street Fighter V player and you're up with your current events, you'll look at this bracket and you'll be like, there's there's a lot of names here. There's a lot of notable people here. And yeah, some people came through uh, for the first time they've ever been to Reboot. And with them coming in, this turned into like one of the deepest Georgia Street Fighter brackets in a long time. I mean, let me, let me, you got Neon, you got Kyle, I have to say Kyle, you'll see why, you had Alex, you got Knowledge, you had Terrence, you had, I mean, I guess I do have to say Painbot to some degree, you had KB, you had Datvip, you have Bates, I mean, you, you can like count the the cream of the crop that's missing. That's how many people were there. Like there there's a small handful of people who weren't there. Like Jesus, Carlos, uh Ice Effect, Shadow Ace, Joel. I mean there's sure there's a decent number. But you you see what I'm saying? Denson. Yeah, I'm forgetting some people. I'm sorry. I, I can't go on forever. But this was a pretty stacked tournament. And between talking to people, between checking out Soul Calibur and Tekken, doing a little bit of commentary, I wasn't able to catch everything. I really wasn't able to catch much. Uh, one thing that I wish I would have caught was this right here. Because I still don't believe this. Now I heard the details, and this is another match that had details. But again, I don't see I don't see a details button. I see results, and even with the details, even knowing what went on behind the scenes, the fact that the fact that Kyle is able to beat Neon 2-0. and then you're looking over here and you're like, well, that means Neon just came up and loser. No, no, no. 
to see that Dapvip is able to beat Neon 2-0, that says a lot to me. It says that a lot of people that have been... They've been whining. That's I'm, I'm not sugarcoating. They've been whining and griping and complaining for God knows how long. Like, they're starting to get on the right track. And I say starting to get on the right track because, again, with all things considered, if everything was even, I, I, I do not think that goes the way it did. But this shows that they don't just get rolled on, uh, rolled over in any given scenario, which that means something. That means something. Um, one of the other big talks of this bracket, and there was like that, that was big talk number one. Big talk number two was Big Bates. Bates starts off with Oen. I actually don't know who Oen is, but this dude. This dude who don't even really play Street Fighter V anymore. He probably hasn't updated his Balrog since like Season 1. He probably hasn't upgraded him since Street Fighter IV. Comes in, puts Dap Vip down in losers. That's kind of believable. Puts KB down in losers. It's also kind of believable. I mean, he wasn't beating Terrence, let's be real. Terrence always comes strapped, he ready. Uh... Did he beat anybody else down here? Nah, he, he lost the run back. But just these two games right here. It was kind of funny. Because, uh, how do I say this? It's just something you don't expect. That's just the best way to put it. Something you don't expect. There were a lot of uh, surprises. A lot of good matches in here. The saddest thing about this is that none of this was recorded. <laughs> well, this is reboot we're talking about. So they do something that I wish so many more people would do, which is record off of their PS4s. So I can't say for fact that none of this was recorded, but none of this was streamed. So there's a reasonable chance that none of this was recorded. But there are some really good games here. Last but not least, the main event of making the main event of most of Georgia, really. The old Tekken. Ye old Tekken. Now, this is a result that I've said quite a few times. Shaolin pulling up to making it. Making sure he comes to collect. That does mean that Korean Panda was here. But Korean Panda. Yeah, he hasn't been playing Tekken. He's been playing like knockoff smash. Yeah, I had to take that shot. But Shaolin, Shaolin was doing his business. There's, there's honestly not too much to say about that. He's being consistent. Chambliss getting second though. Uh, like I said earlier in Soul Calibur, like. This weekend was really the Chambliss show. I don't know how well he does against Jester usually. But I don't I don't think I know who Tony Cliff is. I might. I, I don't know the tag reading it off of Smash GG. But Jambliss is going 2-0 over Hutch. That's, that's nothing to scoff at. Because Hutch is usually the one... That you see, like, in the winner's finals, possibly in the grand finals. Just, you see him in the top three. But to see him get stunned not once, but twice by Chambliss, well, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, that's honestly all I can say about that. Shaolin was doing his stuff. Chambliss was uh, the the surprise dark horse. Didn't make it all the way to the finish line, but uh, no, he uh, he beat a lot of horses that a lot of people would have bet on over. Say a lot, it was like two or three. You get the point, though. He made it over the likes of Hutch and Dada's big baits. This wasn't actually baits. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> but. Yeah, that was 
pretty much your reboot tournament. Just a small wrap up of it. And that leaves me to the last thing, which, again, I'm still not very good at sliding these in. Maybe I should script this, but I'm not. The pictures! Pictures. And what is this picture of? So, like I said in the beginning of this, the reboot crew has been re revamping themselves, revitalizing themselves. That's the fancy word I want to use. Because they were not completely happy with how their tournaments were running, how they were operating as a unit, and just basically how the experience was that they were giving to people last year. So they've sat, and they've got, uh, they've had many meetings. They, they've had very many meetings. They've uh, asked for advice from many people, many, many people. And they they got feedback. I, I actually have to say this specifically because they did get a lot of feedback. And they you could see that they made good and they made responses. They took action in response to the feedback that they got. One of the common things that is like they didn't even get it specifically, but just one of the common things that happens in the FGC altogether at a local level is people don't know. Who in the world are the actual TOs? Who's running the tournament? Who's running the brackets? Who do they talk to? So one of the things they did was they took their pictures of themselves and they put it right over the TO desk with their name, their actual name, and their tag. So Chambliss' name is Chambliss? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the point is they, they took this, put it right over the desk, right? So, anybody who comes in, new person, old person, vet, first-timer, they know who to go to whenever they need something. They also, to a lesser degree, had a list of the TOs above the stations for the games. So, if you were just ever sitting there, because, I mean, this tournament did go on for a while. It started at, like... Five ish, four ish, went on to like ten ish. You know, some people are gonna forget, especially sitting at a barcade. And you just forgot who your TO was. You look up on the wall, boop, their their name is there. You might have to go put the name to the picture, but that's still better than a lot of times where you have some random person walking over to a laptop. Like, who do I talk to? What else happened? Oh. I mean, this wasn't an improvement, per se, but this is Chambliss and Leon. Leon being, I can't remember if he was literally the head. No, he wasn't a T.O. of Soul Calibur. He T.O. Tekken? I mean, he played Soul Calibur, so they, they kind of are at the understanding that if they're going to play a game, at the least it would probably do them a lot better to not T.O. it as well. Yeah, Jesse was T.O. in Soul Calibur. But anyway. Leon was so happy that they had, I think they wound up with 14 for Soul Calibur. He showed me this paper and he said, I'm running out of room. This is a good problem to have. And this was a shot just early on. See Blackstar and Bates, uh, Hutch, the back of Terrence. I mean, I say the back of his head, but... The back of his striped polo. Uh, Domo sitting down here playing. Yeah, that's the best I got. A little pan over to the side with Ricardo. Neil sitting down there trying to get some, uh, get his experience in running a desk. Yeah, this was one of the, one of the, uh, one of the, I don't, how do I put this? I don't want to say one of the better things, although it was good. I don't want to say one of the more interesting things, although it is something you don't see very often, which is Painbot still being himself, still being one of the ambassadors of Samurai Showdown. He came down for the tournament, but he specifically came down because he wanted to play some games with uh, Coach and with Neil. So, like he's been doing since Sham Show's been out, he brought his setup. He also brought his second roommate, Izzy Maru. I say second because he lives with Bates, if you don't know. But 
He brought Izzy Maru, and the three of them came down. Izzy sat at this setup the entire time and played Sam Show. Like, I, I don't think that dude moved for like six hours. But yeah, they had Sam Show on tap. Some more shots. Um, I think this was when the tournament was starting specifically. And Retro was making sure everybody was in line. Stop the casuals, blah de blah so on and so forth. I should have swapped this around with the other one. Because this is Neil over here playing some Sam Show. It's kind of funny I said that uh, Izzy Mara literally didn't get up. But this is him getting up. In deep thought trying to figure out how to deal with Ukio. That, that was funny. Yeah, this... One of the surprise visitors. First time he came down, <laughs> knowledge pull up, as I was calling him. Knowledge re up. Nice to have him come through and see what's up. Um, this is another one I should have swapped. So, if, you, if you've been, like, paying attention to Reboot, more specifically on the social media, you might know who this guy is. This guy is the commissioner of Macon. And he didn't just randomly show up to this tournament. He was there for a pretty specific reason. It was nice to see him come through. And it won't be the last time that we see him. I have to leave it at that. I have to keep it kind of hush-hush. But it was, it was nice to see him pull up. Uh... Jester over here chilling. Korean Panda. Laughing Hyena. It's Malcolm. I can't think of his tag. It's Malcolm. <laughs> it's Malcolm. He was there. Cyblade. Uh huh. Loads of people. That Viv came up like I like I've already said. This is the second time he's been the reboot, I believe. Second or third? It's not the first. Jay, he actually came and he got addicted to Sam Show. Went back home, got into the Georgia Sam Show chat, and was immediately screaming for games. It was pretty funny. It's pretty good. Uh, no, I didn't pull this from the last wrap up. Just like always, whenever they get the free time. And they need to um, get their hands warm or they need to grind a specific matchup. The crew round two boys, always making sure to keep each other up to snuff. I say keep each other up to snuff, but, I mean, Shaolin always gets the better end of the deal. Because he's the one that's making it further in the brackets. Haha. -ha. I'm still waiting for my hoodie. I'm never going to get it. <laughs> Good old Big Bates. Not as Lee Van Dam, but as Big Bates. <laughs> yeah, this is a shot of the the shirt that the Reboot crew had made for Reggie. Again, I'm going to make sure to get the link either to where you can buy the shirt or like how you can get in touch with Sir Retro if you're interested to get his shirt. Because they're still making the shirts. So yeah, if you want to donate to the cause it's not like they will not gladly accept your kindness to be on the lookout for that that boy gal cow down here playing with alex terrence and bates Painbot, and kb a word with kb that's what he entered as kb king birdie was talking about he was a uh, he said he's coming back. It's been a while since we've seen him around. Like, we've seen glimpses of him. But uh, he said he was coming back. And the lookout as he expands his brand. Trying to, um, now that he's got his podcast established, he wants to move on to something else. So we'll have to see where that goes. Some of the reboot crew sitting over here at the stream station. Ricardo, Cyblade. You can barely see Chambliss, and that's Hutch up here. Hutch actually walking around. Proud of Hutch. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. 
I laughed so hard when I was going through my photo album and I saw this. Because I got to do this. All right. All right. Just bear with me for a second. Walk around taking pictures. These, these were the first people that actually wanted to pose for a picture as a whole. Jester, Shaolin, Lee Van Dam, a.k.a. Big Bates, uh, Korean Panda, and <laughs> Laughing Hyena. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was just too good. It was like he literally got photoshopped in there. Oh, Camden. Oh, uh, this was this was either winners finals or grand finals of Tekken. I want to say it was grand finals, but Chambliss and Shaolin wanted to play rock paper scissors. I'm assuming for a side. Logic tells me it was for a side because it's Tekken. And the average Tekken player does not want to be on the player two side because in 2020, people still weak on that right side. So they played a little bit of the Rochambeau. And that's it. I didn't know that was it. I had to press right one more time. <laughs> but yeah, that was this past weekend up in making at the Reboot Retro Barcade. The memorial marvel monthly for reginald cummings aka reggie and that's all i have I again thank you for your time coming to see what was going on and i will make sure to keep you informed and updated of any of the outings that i find myself at until then be easy yo <laughs>